Under our feet, there is a hidden world consisting of thousands of different species, living, building, competing, and dying. In terms of species, and even numbers of individuals, the insects are the rulers of the land, far outnumbering any other terrestrial clade. Among the insects, ants are perhaps the most ubiquitous and successful. With over 12,000 recognized species, these tough animals have colonized almost every landmass in the world apart from Antarctica. Ants alone may form between 15 and 25 percent of the total terrestrial biomass. Ants are the chief predators of insects and spiders, and are also ecosystem engineers, moving more soil than even earthworms. Farming is considered a cornerstone of human civilization. Arising almost 12,000 years ago, farming allowed humans to produce a surplus of food that they were able to store, allowing for population centers that eventually became the first civilizations. However, we were not the first to farm. Atacephalodes, the leafcutter ants, have evolved to learn to cultivate their own food approximately 30 million years ago. The ants cut leaves and bring pieces back to the nest. The adults eat the sap from the leaves and the waste is chewed up into a mulch onto which a fungus grows. The ants cultivate this fungus and harvest it for the larvae to feed on. The ants and fungus have an obligatory mutualism where neither can survive without the other. This adaptation has allowed Atacephalodes to become extremely successful and numerous in tropical regions of South and Central America. The researchers of the study decided to look at the most common leafcutter ant in Costa Rica, the Atacephalodes. It is known that the Atacephalodes nests produce CO2 emissions and the soil in Costa Rican rainforests accumulate CO2 due to the clogging of clay and soil after heavy rainfalls. So the researchers decided this would be their topic of study. It was hypothesized that leafcutter ant nest soils have greater CO2 emissions than non-nest soils. The researchers selected nine long-term sites in which they would conduct their study. Each site consisted of a leafcutter ant nest plot paired with its non-nest plot, which was at least 20 meters away. Six of the nine nests were abandoned by their colonies, but the scientists continued to observe the abandoned nests throughout the study. Since six nests were abandoned, six additional sites were selected and observed. All the sites were set up on a 5 by 6 meter grid so that gas sampling could be done. Three gas wells were installed at 20, 60, and 100 centimeter depths near the center of the sites so that gas samples could be measured. The gas samples were collected monthly using a gas type polypropylene syringe and then they were analyzed. Each sample was measured three times and the average CO2 peak concentrations were converted to absolute concentrations using a standard curve. Collection of gas samples took approximately two and a half years in length before the researchers were satisfied with their findings. The researchers found that the ant colonies changed the CO2 dynamics of the soil. The colonies reduced surrounding soil CO2 concentrations while increasing total emissions. One of the biggest impacts on the amount of CO2 released by the ant colonies was precipitation. The precipitation caused the soil to accumulate less CO2 and caused more CO2 released into the atmosphere. The ant nest vents emitted up to 100,000 times more CO2 than the regular soil surface and increased soil CO2 emissions at an ecosystem level by 0.2% to 0.7% for a neotropical wet forest. During the dry spells, the difference between the amount of CO2 released by the nest and non-nest or regular soil is almost none. But when there's precipitation, that changes drastically. Based on this research, there are a couple of important takeaways that we can see when looking at the grand scheme of things. First, from our examination of this study, it is clear that the, these ants are causing more carbon dioxide to be released into the atmosphere, which is contributing to global warming. Along with this, CO2 released by natural structures is rarely taken into account when measuring the total amount of CO2 that's released in a given area, which means that these areas in which the colonies are located are most likely releasing much more carbon dioxide than previously expected. Also, because they need a warmer climate in order to survive, Global warming is causing more of these colonies to emerge. These new colonies will also contribute to climate change and cause even more CO2 to be released into the atmosphere, which means the warmer it gets, the more these ants will contribute to global warming. This is just yet another reason why we should all work to combat climate change.